So welcome OPSM family. We have again, Jesse Falanga on the left hand of the screen. And at the bottom of the screen, we have head coach Sigur Hoskenda, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Sigur from, from Lichner uh, Club in Iceland. So thank you for being part of the, the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys. No problem. Yeah, coach. Uh, just to get right into it, I'm Jesse, GM of OPSM as well. So it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, pleasure to have you here as well. Quickly, let's just start off about Icelandic football. Um, how do you guys do it? You know, how do you guys, have you guys been able to perform so well against these big these big teams and be consistent for the last five years? Um, it's hard to say. We we get this question a lot, so uh, you're gonna get some answers that have already been answered uh, a few it? times. So uh, yeah, well. Um, you know how it is when you have a small country and a small population, you have like a unity, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, we have, uh, I mean, every Icelander uh, I know is crazy about football and nearly all my friends started playing football at when they were like five or six years old. So um, I would say it's because Icelanders are crazy about football. I mean, you can watch every football you want mm -hmm. um, from everywhere in the world. And, and yeah, we have like, the weather isn't great in Iceland, as you know, but we have like the indoor halls and, and, and I think um, the Icelandic government, they, they let a lot of money into the, into the sport. So, yeah, a lot of good coaches, a lot of a uh, lot of kids playing football all day, every day. So mm. that's kind of it. Yeah. So when you when you began your career or when you began playing football, um, what was the big drive? I know besides playing, it's fun and watching a lot of football. But was it family or was it a special player um, that got you into the game? Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, all my relatives have played football since they were kids so um, I was just like when I started working I started playing football and that's how it is with every kid in Iceland I mean mm -hmm. I mean we love football everyone and and we love watch a lot of English football um, mm -hmm. so my childhood hero Fowler and Owen uh, yeah. Liverpool <laughs> fan you're a Liverpool yeah, fan man. Yeah, yes, yeah. well done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a United supporter so yeah. that's interesting. And then obviously, so you started playing professionally um, in Iceland. And then I saw on transfer market that you had a little, you had a three-year break. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, in Iceland, we're, it's not professional football. I mean, it's like semi-professional. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe if we have a foreigner, that's those players are, are uh, professional. But uh, um, I kind of started, I, I kind of had to quit football when I was 23 because of knee injury. Mm -hmm. So when I came back playing I was just in the lower leagues I tried again in the in the second tire but uh, money didn't hold so I was just playing four tire and just mm. couldn't stop <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean but, yeah. uh, but I had to quit because of injury mm -hmm. so from Early. that injury was that when you transitioned to become a manager or where was your first uh, manager stint well I started coaching when I was 17 okay. um, uh, and then I, I was just coaching like under eights and under nines. Um, then I, when I was 21, I started coaching under 14s. Uh -huh. um, and then at uh, 27, I moved clubs. I was quit playing, and then the real journey began. Began as a as a football coach. I was coaching under 14s, under 16s, under 19s. Mm -hmm. And then two years ago, I I moved to uh, the uh, the A team. Yeah, the A team as well. Mm -hmm. Getting into the A team, you know, obviously there's a, it's a bit of a difference when you're working with young players and the mm -hmm. senior players. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about that and just what that the the, the transition was like. Yeah, um, I was. I'm a personal trainer as well. I went to uh, I went to college I was learning uh, sports science and mm -hmm. um, so I've been a personal trainer for 10 12 years um, mm -hmm. so I was I was doing the physical training for a few clubs 
the A teams for a few clubs. So I kind of was involved with the A teams, you know what I mean? Um, then uh, I went to be assistant coach with Leipzig two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found myself really thinking, okay, this is my spot to be in. Uh, mm-hmm. This is what I want to do. I want to coach the A teams. So uh, it was really easy for me to move between because I had been um, doing the physical work and being close to the coaches that were coaching the A team. So that was a, that was a yeah, a, a good move. A easy transition from mm-hmm. the younger guys to the A team. Yeah. yeah, you guys have been pretty strong this year as well. Uh, from what yeah. I read. Table. Yes. Yeah, top of, top of the table right now. Um, mm-hmm. We have a little bit of a coronavirus incident now. It was just mm-hmm. today. Yeah. Um, we stopped training and stopped playing at least for a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, it's not going to affect mm-hmm. the season really much because obviously we're top of the table, so we yeah. need <laughs> to keep going. Uh, fingers crossed. I hope it will go, go well. Mm-hmm. I wanted to talk more about the Icelandic division um, in the sense of what, do you, what is your thoughts about the level, um, the level of play from the second division to the first division? Um, is there a big major gap? If so? um, some would say it was, a, it was a major gap, but I don't feel like, like the bottom six. We have uh, 12, 12 teams in each league. Mm-hmm. Um, bottom six and, bottom, oh, and top six I think that's not a big difference. Um, we had uh, like the cup uh, mm-hmm. yesterday. There were cup games, and uh, three teams from the second tier won against the first tier. So mm-hmm. I don't feel there's a big gap, but uh, some some say it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On so the then, grand scheme of things, sorry, on, on the grand scheme of things, where do, where does Iceland, the first division, I guess, the top teams? Where do you think they rate you know, in the rest of Europe if it's the second tier leagues, the third tier leagues? Wow, it's hard to say, hard to say. Um, the best players in, in the top league, um, they are going young to, uh, to the Scandinavia um, uh-huh. and they are doing really good there. So uh-huh. it's hard to say, but um, I, I think the level is, level is pretty good. Yes. And then, so in the the second division in the Icelandic division, what is like the, the foreign rules? Like how many foreign players can you have uh, in the league? No or rules. In the team? There's no, no rules. Okay. No. Um, but it's, it can't be hard to get players from, uh, from out the EU. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have like teams in the, in the second tier that have like 10 or 12 foreigners. So okay. there's no rules. So, do you, so does that help? Do you think with like, you know, the promotion and relegation, do you think, the players that have more foreigners on their team, that's how they were able to get pushed? Or do you think it doesn't really have an effect, really? Uh, yeah, it definitely matters. Um, yeah. I mean, we have a team that we, we thought would be bottom three, maybe. Um, they have like now 10 or 12 foreigners that are doing really, really good job for them. Um, mm-hmm. So they're in sixth or fifth place. Mm-hmm. Doing really good. Um, the top teams always have two or three foreigners at least um, that are probably their best players. So mm-hmm. yeah. So then, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I was going to ask. Um, it's more just about Iceland, but I'll let go. Go and ask. It. I think he's going to continue this question. No, no, no. So, so what I was going to Jesse Hill is. So I'm what, sorry. I was, <laughs> what I was going to get into was, um, I guess, for you as a as a manager in the recruiting aspect, um, what are the type of players that you look for um, to build your team from the the back line all the way from to the front? Yeah, you're always you're always looking at your squad and uh, thinking what what position you would like to fill. Um, like before this season, we we only needed to strengthen the goalkeeper position with with a foreigner, um, and that was that took like two months uh, just to uh, watch a lot of tapes, um, get get feedback from someone that knew someone that knew the player, you know, yeah, yeah. Just, to get, just to get a feeling his personality and things like that. I mean, moving to Iceland, you. Uh, it's it's kind of different from 
from maybe the places they've been playing. Yeah. So uh, what I'm looking for is like a type of player that would come in and uh, mix with like the culture and uh, mixes with the group. Um, is he the same age as the core of the group? Like our goalkeeper, 24 years old. He was yeah. the old, oldest player in, in the starting lineup last, wow. last two games. Wow. So, um, so if, if I would have needed some guy with good experience, I would have gone, gone for an older guy or so. I mean, when they come, I, I'd like the player to mix in with the group really quickly. I mean, if he comes in and doesn't talk to anybody and because um, in Iceland, like in the second tire, you, you don't have professional players. Yeah. So you need to have a good spirit and uh, the guys need to have like a good bond outside the football because they're not doing it for the money. They're doing it because they love to play football. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when I get a foreigner, he needs to be good in, in, in those, those kind of things, mix in with the group quickly and, and be a good guy. Yeah. And then, and then what about the mindset and the character? Like how big does a mindset of a footballer play into your, into yeah. your routine? Just everything. I yeah. mean, <laughs> I, I, I need to get a foreigner that's that's 100% uh, motivated to, I mean, he wants to come and play and he wants to get better and, and maybe use this club, my club, to be a stepping stone for another club. Exactly. So I, I need a guy who's, who's really determined. That's, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah coach, you know, um, a lot of coaches have, you know, their certain identities, Jurgen Klopp, rock and roll, mm -hmm. Jose Mourinho parked the bus. <laughs> um, you know, that, that's look beautiful. So, for you, what is the, the you know the Sigurd the Holskinsen a philosophy of football? If you have one, <laughs> yeah, um, we we are playing in a league where um, <clears throat> we have a, a lot of defensive-minded coaches, um, really tactical, really. Um, I mean, we have by far the most possession in the league. Mm -hmm. We have. Uh, average 60 plus wow. percent average possession. So uh, possession-based football. Um, we have now we have a team that we are really good at the break, uh, the counter. Um, we are really fast forwards. So mixing those things, being both possession plus <laughs> uh, trying to get as many. Uh, counter breaks as we can yeah. um, so I would say I would make me a possession based uh, coach I like to press high up the field win the ball uh, high up the field we've scored a lot of goals this season after regaining possession uh, high up the pitch so that's my what do you say philosophy it's, it's uh, I, I find it hard to uh, to put it in words how how I like to play, but uh possession based I like to keep the ball on the ball you you can both tire the op opponent and get a break on the ball yeah. you know as well this is well described um nationally does the F, does the Icelandic f a you know how can I say propose ways of playing in terms of just getting the whole, getting everybody on the same system or is it just clubs do their own thing? I would say clubs do their own thing. Yeah. Uh, we have been trying to change that. Um, mm -hmm. We have like a director of football who is also uh, under 21 national coach. Um, he's been trying to get some line through the teams, but um, it's not going so good, I would say. Um, I see a lot of uh, coaches coaching the under 14s under 16s just playing a lot of tactical football um kicking it long and and just grinding results mm -hmm. uh, that's not how i see see it um when i was coaching uh, the under 14s under 16s i mean just keeping the ball for me for me you're always trying to get the players to get better by putting them into hard situations one-on-ones um, 
playing out of pressure. Uh, and I, I don't think coaches should be looking at the results, uh, just making better players and, and right. getting them into situations in the games where they don't feel comfortable and let them let them figure out how to how to do it properly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, so then moving forward for Icelandic football, for it to improve, it is safe for you guys to have a better standing internationally. Is it the league that has to get better, or do you think it's realistic that, that the league can get better, or is it just players having to go to Europe um, and competing? Yeah, I think, I, I think uh, for us, um, the players need to go abroad to get better. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we can't offer because Icelandic as an Iceland as a nation, the parents, because when you, when you grow up, you live in a certain neighborhood. And if you live in a certain neighborhood, you just play for that team. Yeah. Um, like we did in my, uh, the club I was coaching under 14s to under 19s, Stjartnan. Um, mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest clubs in Iceland. Um, we tried to make some elite changes. I mean, we tried to have, like, you have an elite group in under 14s, and then the other ones have a different coach mm -hmm. that don't get into the elite group just to get, um, just to make it more professional. Um, but Iceland as a nation, the parents, they, they aren't ready for, for it. Because mm -hmm. they feel like we have parents that maybe have huge companies and they pay a lot of money to the teams and things like that. They, they can't uh, see their children not being chosen for the elite group. So they will just make a fuss about it. And, and we tried it for two years and then it just stopped because of the parents and things like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, really so <laughs> Iceland, Iceland as a nation isn't ready for this elite thinking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why I think the younger players, because if, if, if they stay in Iceland, they get a maybe good coaching and things like that. Yeah. And they play a lot of games, like from 16 to 20, they play a lot of uh, grown up football, not mm -hmm. like under 19s and under 17s and things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think if you're going to like Gilve uh he went to Reading when he was 16. Mm -hmm. and nearly every player in the national team 2018 2016 they had gone early to, to yeah abroad you yeah. know what i mean like one or two players that played any football in iceland mm -hmm. so you would say that the latest time for a young player from iceland to leave to go abroad would probably be 16 years old or no i mean we have we have really promising player now playing for us he's 19 i think he is definitely at the right place for him because he's that type of player he needs to be in okay. his environment we okay. sold him before the season to the biggest club in iceland uh, he's on loan with us this summer and then he goes to them mm -hmm. he definitely has the potential to be a professional player abroad okay. but i'm not sure it would have been good for him to go abroad 16 or 17. He needed to be in his environment and shine with us in the second tire and then in the first tire. Yeah. Uh, but if you have the, the right mindset, uh, like Gilvi and uh, Aaron Einar and the players in the national team, if you have the right mindset, you should definitely go 16 or 17, as early as possible. I yeah. think. Okay. But the mindset is, is the total the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know Alfred Fimporson, who's playing in Germany now? Yeah. 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 He he only went abroad when he was twenty one. Oh wow. So he, yeah. So he made he he went through the whole under nineteens. He didn't play with the uh, A team until he was twenty, and he just when he was twenty he was by far the best player in the league. Only his first. First season with the A team. Yeah. And the next season, he went to Europe and did a great job. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to ask this on the grand scheme of things, um, traveling, infrastructure, you know, what's that like for you guys getting ready for preseason, things like that? Like, 
I know it's winter, I guess, eight months of the year. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, have, we have by far the longest preseason in the yeah. world. Yeah. So <laughs> it's almost it's like mm. seven or eight months. Uh, yeah. And it gets really dark and really cold. And uh, mm. uh, the teams that have the indoor halls, um, it doesn't affect them really much. We don't have an indoor hall. Uh, we didn't have last season. We have like a half sized pitch now that we can use. My A team will will have like two or three trainings a week indoors. Um, but like the winter was now, it was really bad winter. Um, uh -huh. Ruined a lot of work you want to do out on the pitch. Um, yeah. But um, I mean, it's not that bad. We have intro halls and, and we have artificial grass all over and, and it's heated most of the time um so it's like the first two or three months of these sevens you're only focusing on maybe getting the play what do you say getting them in in shape yeah. plus having fun playing a lot of games um the players are like some are in college uh, some are working so it's really dark outside i mean it, it it has to be really fun to go to practice. You you need yeah. to be hey, hey I'm going to practice now. It, it needs to have that, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. So well, with, with promotion, you guys might be able to go to Spain. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, nearly every every club goes to Spain or Turkey or or Portugal for like two weeks. Yeah. But that that didn't happen this year because of Corona. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> so everyone is looking forward to that all winter and yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we were talking about the preseason, how long it is. So can you kind of explain how an Icelandic season looks like? So when, yeah. does, when does it start? When does it end? And when does preseason start and everything? Like that? Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, we start like now. It's going to be a little bit different because we have to move the season for like a month because of Corona. But usually. Um, we start training, uh, we finish the season in September, uh, like mid-September, uh, mid-October we start training again, mm -hmm. uh, then we train, have like two or three friendlies, um, train four or five times a week plus like the physical gym, gym preparation um, until January, then we start like we have two um, like uh, friendly cups. Uh, like every team in Reykjavik, we have Reykjavik tournament. We okay. play that in January, February. Mm -hmm. um, then we have like a little cup competition um, where every club plays right. in. Um, that's mixed like the A cup, B cup, C cup, after okay. which, which, um, which league you're in. Um, that finishes about beginning of April. Um, then you have like a month to prepare for the season. Um, the season starts in the beginning of May um, and goes through September. So May, June, July, August, September is like four, four and a half. Months. Wow. So like a six, four to six month season. And then... <laughs> The rest of just training. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So then your recruiting is different, right? So then how? Yeah, you, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So then you're bringing in like, players for the for a team like us, which don't we don't have a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. We we can't offer like a professional player a contract from January. Yeah. So you've been training for four or five months when you will get in like a professional player in April or beginning of May. Yeah. So uh, he, he needs to blend in and he needs to get to know the players and the tactics really quickly. Mm -hmm. But some, some teams have professional players the whole year round and, and we definitely want to be at that place. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're moving towards that. Um, hopefully we can promote this summer and, and then we can maybe strengthen the squad earlier 
to get the players in before. So for the players that are coming into your, your program or to your, your club, um, you mentioned like obviously with financials being a bit of a, a situation, do players just work as well with the club or what are the ways that the club... Um, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Um, sometimes the work with the club, like half a day, uh, four hours a day, they work uh, at the club or have a job somewhere else. Yeah. Some, some don't even have jobs, just to play. They just buy. Okay. Yeah. So they will probably get housing and a car and, and some wages as well. And if they like, they can uh, work a little bit okay. coaching the younger players. Or, yeah, that's good. That's, mm-hmm, that's so cool. but I guess uh, to wrap it up, Soli, we have, uh, we're about 30 minutes in. I got to ask you, favorite uh, national team win? England. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the game against Holland was pretty good as well in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yes. was great as well. Are you talking about great. England in Euros? Was it the yeah. Euros? Yeah, the, yeah. That, that, game, <laughs> that game killed me. I'll tell you right now. I, I put all my money on, on England to win. And all okay. England needed to just win or tie. And then they, oh, they ended up losing that game. They ended up losing that game. Mm. So that's crazy. Have you seen the video of, of McLaren? when he is uh, hosting the show. No. No, no. Uh, he's, saying, he's saying it's a really funny video. You can see it on YouTube. Uh, he's uh, explaining how England will, because uh, in the video, Iceland is equalizing 1-1. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he says, yeah, there's no problem. England, England's going to do that and that and that. And then, oh, damn it. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was so cocky, and then yeah. as, as he was ma- as he was making that speech, they scored again. So yeah, yeah, oh, yeah definitely was, my favorite favorite game, Icelandic results. That was a great. That was a classic game. Um, yeah. Jesse, before you uh, you ask the question and answer uh, the Q and A, I wanted to ask you, Seeger, um, for so for you as a manager, um, obviously as a young manager, top of the table. Um, what are your ambitions um, as a manager that where would you want to see yourself in maybe two, three years or down the line or what's the goal and the vision for you? Um, well, my journey just started really um, only my second season um, as I, I started like mid last season. I was doing a great job season. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but um Hopefully promoting now with Lechner. Um, I am extending my contract now with Lechner for next two years. Um, so hopefully promoting uh, and then make my name in Icelandic football for the next couple of seasons. Um, and then definitely trying to go abroad, coaching, coaching uh, abroad. That's my main ambition. That's awesome. That's awesome. Too. Yeah, congratulations, my coach. Um, you know, we like to end it with a little Q and A. Um, yeah. Have you built? So we're gonna give you some some legends of the game. Um, mm-hmm. Let you pick beside them, and see uh, what kind of team we we pick out. So we'll start with center backs at the spine. Um, Fabio Cannavaro or Paolo Maldini. Uh, <laughs> uh, Maldini. Maldini. Wow. Oh. Okay, that's a good choice. I like that choice. Um, in the midfield, in the Spanish midfield, Xavi Hernandez or Andrea Pirlo? Steven Gerrard. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, I would say Xavi. Yeah? Uh, okay, well, I got to ask the obligatory England question. Paul Scholes, uh, Frank Lampard, or Steven Gerrard? Steven Gerrard, all day. All day. <laughs> how, close do, how close are Scholes and, and Lampard then to taking far, a Far, far, far. Far? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I like them all. I like them all. I went to see, I went to see Chelsea play at, in 2008 uh-huh. uh, at Stubber Bridge. They were playing and. When you see, when I saw Frank Lampard live for mm-hmm. the first time playing, that's that's a Classic. whole different, whole different. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I've seen I've seen Gerard play like ten times. So mm-hmm. that's my. You know Gerard pretty well, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, in the creative part of midfield, we have Andreas Iniesta or Zinedine Zidane. 
Iniesta and Xavi together, or you have to choose that. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can't have one without the other. Oh, no. That's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And then obviously the striker, um, Michael Owen or Robbie Fowler, because you're a Liverpool fan. Um, 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 Robbie Fowler. Robbie really? Fowler. Really, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. That's a good choice. I got to ask why. Because Michael Owen went to Menu. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is a great answer. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair yeah. Enough. Hey, coach, I got to ask the last question then. Since you've seen a lot of live football, who is the best player you ever saw live? Uh, best player ever live? Uh, there are quite a few. I mean, I've seen Messi play when he was uh, 22 or 3. He was brilliant, of course. Um, but he had been injured, so he wasn't showing off too much. Uh, I was really amazed when I saw Virgil van Dijk play. Um, it's like a full-grown man playing against babies, really, uh, <laughs> really, really amazed. Um, I was, it's, it's funny to say, I, I was uh, watching um, the German national team mm -hmm. train. Mm -hmm. At our, I was working as a groundsman at our uh, national stadium, mm -hmm. so I watched a lot of, of training from the from the other teams. Uh, mm -hmm. And there was one player that uh, Michel Palak. Yes, Michael Palak. When I saw him shooting and passing, that was I've I've never been as amazed. Yeah, he's got good technique, huh? Amazing technique. Unbelievable. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. But well, then, of course, I've, 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 my favorite player of all time is, is Jared. So um, I've seen him too. like 10 times. So, best so you guys can be best friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also those guys, so I'm not, I'm not in this conversation. Uh, man. But awesome. Thank you again. I appreciate you taking the time to be upon this OPSM podcast. And uh, stay tuned for the next one, guys. Yeah? Yes, yeah. Thanks, Coach. Thank you very much.